Some days before, someone from my Discord server sent this screenshot captioned Star Rail new collaboration and it ended up being a picture of them getting your typical scammy video game advertisement that uses characters and voices from animes that they 100% don't have the rights to on Instagram. Of course, we've seen many of these types of ads that took heavy inspiration from gachas like Genshin and most recently, Star Rail which also happens to be the game that this one is ripping off from. <laughs> so you can so clearly tell from the fact that they pretty much just took the entirety of Star Rail's battling UI and simply pasted a bunch of Jujutsu Kaisen characters to the characters out of the UI alongside some random alt symbols. They even got the skill points, auto battle, and double speed settings still on the whole thing. The only thing they bothered adding that was anywhere near original is this Times New Romans kind of shit in action writing that they got beside the speed settings. 10 out of 10 originality. Would definitely play and see the game shut down 3 months later. Whether it's because they finally got shut down by the studios that actually holds the license and the rights to the animes, or the scammers think that they made enough money from this grift and is ready to move on to the next one. At this point, I already thought, damn, these guys are getting even more shameless. But it wasn't until I literally got the same exact ad myself on Instagram, not even 5 hours after I first saw that in Discord, before I really thought, wow. These guys are really becoming even more shameless than I thought. Because like I said, I've seen a duck ton of these sort of scam ads and most of them would normally just steal the UI of one game and then use some other anime to use as the game's character and art material. All that's about on par for the course. But what I didn't expect is for this ad to also take Star Rail's Janjo Lawfu battle theme and just straight up stick it into the background of the ad. <laughs> It even took me a while to actually clock the fact that, wait a minute, these guys are also using the Star Rail OST? All because I'm so used to just tuning that music out from the background when I hear it in Star Rail. That's why it took a couple of seconds from my brain to actually register that Wait a minute, I'm actually hearing this from the ad. I'm not hearing this from some random Star Rail tab that I have opened somewhere. This, I, I'm actually hearing it from this ad. Honestly, that was the first time I actually got to see an ad actually doing that. So I just had to record it because normally they but they put in an effort to at least use a super popular opening song from the anime that they took because they're always gonna make the scam games from super popular animes so they pick their most iconic music to go along with it say like Kai Kai Kitan for GJK or, or Bluebird for Naruto just so that people don't even need to look at the ad and they can just recognize it from music alone so they'll be just scrolling and then wait a minute I know this song and then they'll come back to that ad and be like oh look it's an ad about a game that happens to feature an anime that I like. But to hear them just straight up rip the BGM off the game that they are scamming the overall look from? Damn. It's no wonder that people question why Instagram allowed this sort of marketing scam to happen and the short answer to that question is this little thing right here. Yep, so as long as these people are paying for these ads, Instagram will just display them first and foremost and ask questions later. It's just a matter of when people are going to report the ad and eventually they will have to take it down due to very obvious copyright and license matters. Now whether or not you think that it's quite a lame move from Instagram or Meta themselves, well, I'll let you be the judge of that. I even looked up that specific app which apparently doesn't even exist in the US app store so I had to look at it from my country's app store and saw the usual telltale signs of a scam game. A publisher that is both unknown and literally only has that one game with a surprisingly huge IP attached to it. Very basic description that tries to appeal to the fans of the IP and faithful storytelling. And of course, very short and obviously bought it or fake reviews. Ironically, the one distinct comment which is also the only reviewed one star comment that is graciously available in the review page is this one that just had to be in my local language of Indonesia. User Pohdua Bedejas right here eloquently saying, 
nggak bisa dibuka pantek <laughs> which is just this person literally complaining about how the game can't be opened and that last word is a swear word that can have a whole lot of unpleasant meanings depending on where you're from in Indonesia so I'll just keep on explaining that and the next line literally just says layar hitam which just means black screen because that person definitely knew that he'd had to elaborate on his troubles considering what he said the first time around now for those of you who still need further explanation yes most of these games are almost always a scam particularly if you live in the southeast asia or asia region in general and you frequent instagram tiktok or any one of those platforms then you'd probably come across a couple of them every now and then Obviously, seeing as the type of people who would even consider trying these games are apparently people who come from the likes of my country. <laughs> the ones that are as blatant as this one, especially in their ads, will always be a scam. Because not only will the actual gameplay be wildly different from what you see in the ads, but there are some who will try to lure you in by using even more big anime IPs in hopes that one of those big animes can entice you to play their game. So they just try to stack as much as they can into one game. More like steal rather than stack, but you get what I mean. And to be clear, the scam for those ones is not the fact that there is no game. They will have a game and it will look somewhat similar to what you'd see in the ads if there are a big amount of anime IPs being smushed together into one game, but it is rather the fact that these games are normally not published by people who actually have the rights to the IPs of those animes or at least have acquired the license needed to make a game using those characters. So you can sort of think of these games as somewhat of a ticking time bomb. You download the game, give them their ad money, or if they really really got you all hook, line, and sinker, you spend your actual money on it, spend a bunch of time actually having you play the game, until either one of these three things ends up happening to them, some of which I've mentioned briefly before. One, which is the one that makes them a super ticking time bomb, is when the actual studios and license holders actually caught wind of the game, report it to the related app stores, and have the game shut down for very obvious breach of copyright reasons, of course. This is the first bomb that most commonly ends up nuking these sort of games to the ground. Number two is that these scammers finally got the profits that they were looking for, realizes that they can still get away practically scot-free, and shut down the servers before anyone was able to say a word to them or the app stores in which they are published in. They get their money, Players can't really complain anymore since the game has shut down and app store policies mostly rely on yourself to be responsible with who you are giving your money to and the game just disappears off the face of the earth. For the players, there goes your time spent. For the players who spent their money in the game, it will be another cautionary tale of why the fuck did you spend your money on that. And for the scammers, well, at this point they are probably off enjoying the money or they are then focusing on making their next scam. And number three, which might also be more of a common occurrence than I think because, well, I wouldn't really know, is that the opposite of number two scenario would happen. They run the server for months, the scammers I mean, they run the server for months, people are not playing because their products were not scammy enough to end up tricking people into playing, let alone spending their money in the game. Scammers realize that they are basically burning money on the game and shut down the servers with them being hopefully poorer due to having to maintain the servers without actual income coming from the game itself. Get wrecked, son. Either way, unless these types of games that have big IPs are published by studios which also bears a similar level of established presence within the gaming space or if they have been announced to be in collaboration with the anime's original studio, then it's best if you don't touch the game. Even if you have a 10 kilometer pole by your side, you don't even have to report them per se, you just need to not touch them and play them because like scenario number 3, they'll die out with no players anyway. And look, even if it is from a recognizable publisher, you still want to approach these using a bunch of big IP anime type of games with a huge grain of salt because having a recognized publisher guarantees nothing to the game's longevity. Look at this gacha game called Crossing Void. On paper, what's not to like about the concept? Super popular anime franchises in it like SAO, Oremo, and the Devil is a Part-Timer series as part of its huge roster of characters, a turn-based fighting style gameplay, 
pretty decent graphics and sprites and was backed by Tencent of all companies. Did it do well? Well, not only were most of the sprites just recycled from their other fighting game that they made a couple of years prior, the gacha was insanely stingy and buggy. The gacha was buggy, the rates were buggy, so that's like bad level stuff. And three years in for the global version, the game goes kaput in late 2022. Even 91 Ack, the main publisher that Tencent was backing, actually had to lay off their staff in February of this year, leaving just their producer, Chang Lei, as the sole member of the team, before realizing that the revenue that they made from the game that they last released, which actually started pretty poorly, ended up doing pretty well and was eventually enough for the team to rehire some of their members at a lower salary, and they managed to keep the studio going, which is, well, great news for everyone involved, I guess, so congrats. Guess, you know, maybe the Crossing Void thing wasn't exactly their fault in the, to begin with. But the point of the video is, people, don't be a dummy. Don't be fooled by the prospect of big IPs and a game that might exist and most certainly do not fall for the traps of people who are obviously just looking to make a quick cash grab from your interest. This video wasn't supposed to be this sort of a long form video but I just found it really funny and it, the script just kept going so well here it is. But that's all I have for today. Stay smart out there folks. Until the next video, my name's Leafy and I'll see you all next time. Sayonara.